You are watching the Big Dog Post Game Show, brought to you by Viner Forgates and the Big Dog himself, Rick Jacklich, at the Jacklich Law Group. Well, it's been an odd day in College Park. The weather was Maryland. It was raining, it was cold, it was sunny, it was warm. Maryland was up, and in the end, Maryland goes down 27-24 to Michigan State. I'm Wayne. That's Mason. Bruce is away from the camera. Mason, what what did you see out there at the very end? Yep, yeah, same year, same Maryland. Uh, just another Big Ten game. You can chalk up in that column of games you should have won here at home that you don't. And so much for that player-led culture, that four-quarter team. We're not that yet. No, Maryland had the ball in this end zone or close to it a few minutes to go. They miss a makeable field goal, and a one-play drive for Michigan State ties the game. And then most people, well, you can see the field goal going through the uprights here. Michigan State methodically drives down the field. A good two-minute drive. You have to give it to Sparty. They look like they were out of the game. It looked like it could have been over, and they end up going back to win the game. Yeah, I mean, it's clear. The better coach football team won the game. They made every mistake you could have made. You can't take advantage of it. And in the end, they have consistent offensive progress throughout the game. And they set themselves up, or Maryland, frankly, set them up themselves up to lose the game. So Maryland did. There was a penalty on a missed field goal that ended the half. And Michigan State comes back and makes that. Uh, there was the pass interference penalty when it was third down out of the 20-yard line, a little bit directly behind us and extended that drive. And when Michigan State got around midfield, the, the uh-oh feeling certainly kicked in. Michigan State had a great resiliency there. Like I said, I thought that Maryland had this one, and clearly uh, that was not the case. Um, wow. You know what? we got a great new ad from Rich Acklich and Kevin Willard. We're going to play that here, get ourselves together, and we'll be back in a moment. So, Turp fans, if your family's injured in a car crash, you'd be barking mad not to call Rick and the Big Dogs at the Jacklich Law Group at 855-BIG-DOG-1. But as you know, Coach, it's not the last win, it's the next win that's so important. And that's why we continue to hustle, continue to work so hard for all of our clients to earn that name, the Big Dogs from the small firm. Just like you do. You get your guys hustling all the time. That's why we love you, Rick. And most of all, Go, go Terps! Terps. Yes, obviously disappointing for all of us. And we're back here on the field. There are a couple of good things that happened. One is Ty Felton still looks legit. Uh, he, had, he scored again. He was the catalyst of a drive that early on when uh, Billy hit him, beautiful pass to the right sideline. Uh, you can't say enough at this point about Glendon Miller finding instant success this season. Uh, here's that interception. That, that either was a sack, fumble, or an interception. Got credit for interception. Yeah, there, there aren't positives. There are individual positives, just like there have been in the entire era of Mike Loxley, but as a team, this is a massive failure. This team won at home 16 to 10 against FAU this week, an eight and a half point favorite. I mean, you want to talk about non-biased things, point spreads are the most non-biased thing I think there is. I don't know really what, what can be expected around here anymore. I mean, why, why would fans come back to the games here? Why, like there's just a lot of 
A lot of looking around at each other that needs to be done inside that, that locker room right now. But, look, there's another game next weekend. It's another opportunity. It's not an easy game going down to Charlottesville. But you just it just goes into the botched opportunities that, that have been here now over the past three years. You could have really built something and had a big home game here in a couple weeks and continue to build into that Northwestern game at night, the USC game following that, chance to win – you know, multiple Big Ten games in a row with the easier schedule, and just clearly something was not right today on that field. Every opportunity, the Edwards interception, the missed kick, you couldn't have a team try and give you a game more than today, but uh, I'll echo it from, it's like last year against Illinois. You just don't like it when teams hit walk-off field goals uh, on your field, and just, just not, not the team that I think uh, anybody really expected to see today. No, it was not. The Michigan State had turnovers. Clearly, if you got to their quarterback, you could rattle him. He did give the ball up several times. Maryland didn't score off of those. The mistakes that Maryland made either gave Michigan State another chance of points or extended drives uh, that in the end ended up killing the Terrapins. It's hard to stay positive, but we don't. It's, look, it's the second game of the season. Don't want to go negative on this either. So we'll try and stay in the middle. Yeah. Nope. And, I mean, I will say huge props to Jonathan Smith. I mean, his team last week did not look good at all. Uh, at points today, they did not look good at all. But to have that many transfers, that much turnover going in, a quarterback in his first year of really playing, to just stick with it, keep his head in the game, deliver that deep ball at the end of the game, lead that two-minute drive, not make the mistake, I mean – Credit where it's due, really, really solid team and group performance from that Michigan State team to pull away from this one. I mean, that kicker that made that kick shanked the kickoff before that out of bounds. So, I mean, just great mental fortitude from Michigan State to stay in the game and to ultimately walk away with the win. More games are lost than are won, said the great Ken Beatrice for a long time on WMAL after many a Redskin game. And today felt like a game that was lost and credit to the winners. I'm Wayne, that's Mason. Thanks to Rick Jacklich, and of course, thanks to Viner Forgates, your hometown IT team. If you have a project anywhere in this great country, Viner Forgates is a great choice from building a new office, putting in a new network, or looking for consultants to help you drive AI to shape your future, call Viner Forgates. We will see you with the Young Terps uh, podcast after the game still and then before the Virginia game and we will see you from Charlottesville as the band starts up behind us good afternoon from College Park